What's up, YouTube? So tonight we're gonna to address mass shootings because I just came across some information that I just had to share with you all about one mass shooting that occurred a few weeks ago in Buffalo. Now, I'm sure you all heard of Aaron Salters Jr., the security guard, police off, former police officer who tried to save and apprehend a heavily armed suspect who came in the store and just started shooting everyone. Now, here's the thing, what a lot of people don't know, and I had to, dis I found this from a news clip that was buried in YouTube and I don't know if YouTube is deleting these, these clips, but check this out. Aaron Salter Jr. wore many hats in his life, retired police officer, substitute teacher, but one of his true passions was science. He built a lab in his garage where he spent countless hours working to develop an engine that could run on water. It's not running off of gas fumes. No, there's no gas fumes. This man literally was about to replace gasoline with water. Back in 2015, he gave viewers a tour of his hydrogen electrolysis powered Ford F-150 pickup truck, which he said initially is started by gas and then gets switched to run on water. Okay. You'll have to see all of this. Um, you got your, you got your, um, here, just step back here. You got your hydrogen um, for your electrolysis. You got your batteries, your water. I want you to notice that you can get a shot of showers. There's there's no water in the. Uh, in the Watch yourself. Yeah, you can see okay, tank is empty. We're gonna need water in a minute. This is a agitator. Uh, so we're gonna do four experiments today uh, for the patent examiners. The first one, um, you do need electrolysis, but what my system has done is taken advantage of the residue that's produced by the electrolysis. So we're going to actually start this vehicle without any electrolysis. The second one, we're going to fill the water tank with water. And again, we're going to be able to start it without electrolysis and run this engine. How long, we'll, we'll find out. Then we're going to turn the hydrogen generator on and we're going to let that produce some gas and then we're going to um, see how long the engine runs with the hydrogen only and then the fourth one we're going to use the combination of the hydrogen generator the agitator and we're going to see how long it, it runs together okay so First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna start the engine up on gas first. Um, and I'm gonna initiate the uh, agitator. And then uh, we're gonna go to the front and we're gonna switch the gas, hydrogen gas on and the regular fuel off, okay? We're gonna pause for a second. Go ahead. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start it.
Okay. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on the hydrogen. And then I'm gonna turn off the gas. Turn on this gas and this is an off position. And it's it's running on with no electrolysis. So it's, it's, it's running on a high. So it's not running on a hydrogen right yeah, now. It's running on a hydrogen, hydrogen right now. now. And you shut the gas. The gas is, the gas is in the shut off position right there. The gas in the shut off position. Not too many people know about this aspect of his life. He will go down in history as a hero. But here's where it gets interesting. He's not the only one who came up with this concept and ended up dead. Stan Meyer also created a car that ran off of water as opposed to gas. His goal was to keep the country safe from oil embargoes and to have an alternate solution for when the country reached another oil crisis. He was able to make water fuel cars by splitting down water to its most basic form. He used high voltage and high frequencies to tear apart the molecule using resonance. When the hydrogen burned, the oxygen would be released through the exhaust. He traveled around the country to show to his investors that his invention worked. That's when the top oil companies took interest. They sued him in court when he tried to patent. Water has always been considered a precious commodity, but Stan Meyer's invention may make it even more valuable. He has developed what's called a water fuel cell. It has taken the place of his old gas tank. The water fuel cell breaks down water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen is used to run his dune buggy. And I don't care if you use rainwater, well water, city water, ocean water. If you don't have any fresh water, go ahead and use snow. If you don't have any snow available to you, they use salt water because there's no adverse effect to the fuel cell. In 1998, him and his brother go out to lunch with some potential investors. He takes a sip of his cranberry juice and immediately grabs his throat as if he couldn't breathe. He runs out to the parking lot and collapses. He says, they tried to poison me, they tried to kill me. Now, his death was ruled as an aneurysm, but to this day, his brother believes that these top oil industries sent somebody to assassinate him. Then you have Tom Ogle. He created a system that did away with the car's carburetor system so that the car could only run on fumes. This resulted in 100 miles per gallon. He ended up taking a team of scientists from El Paso, Texas to Deming, New Mexico with two gallons. Now, if you're not familiar with this trip, this trip is well over 100 miles. When he tried to patent it, he was sued by General Motors. They claimed that they already had something similar but weren't trying to release it. Ogle would have ended up a billionaire but ended up broke. In 1981, he ended up dead. Cause of death was ruled a suicide. Now, are these men assassinated because they threatened the economy in these big time oil industries? Last year, the oil and gas drilling sector received about $2.1 trillion. Anyone who would threaten that profit margin would seem to be a person of interest. Hence why they usually end up dead. It's no coincidence that a heavily armed 18 year old walks into the same convenience store that Aaron Salters just so happened to be working in. Goes in, kills 10 people and walks out unscathed. You don't find that suspicious? You don't find that suspicious? You don't find that suspicious? It's labeled a hate crime, but who's to say there's something more suspicious that's at play? Keep in mind, the government's been playing with mind control since the 1950s, late 1940s. Now, who's to say that these MK Ultra assassins aren't the ones playing out the government's dirty work? whether that be to take out someone who's threatening the system or to topple governments. Now, I just find it very suspicious that an 18 year old walks into a convenience store, the same convenience store that a man who was about to potentially change the world just so happened to be working at. And could he have been racist and had an agenda against black people? I don't know. But it is a little eerie that he just so happened to come in the store with military grade equipment and just start spraying everybody and took out Aaron Salters. My gut feeling is telling me that there's a lot more to the story when it comes to these mass shooters, but I would love to know your thoughts. Was Aaron Salters, Tom Ogle, and Stan Meyer, were all these men assassinated because they pose a threat to a trillion dollar industry? Or is this all just one big conspiracy theory and we're looking too deep into it? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Until next time, people.